Are you preparing for AZ 900? 20 latest questions on AZ 900 exam coming up in this video. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 7 of AZ 900 series in 2023, we bring to you 20 latest questions on AZ 900. And today, besides giving you all the answers, I will also explain the cloud concepts behind each question. And as always, there will be loads of Microsoft documentation so that you can validate the answers and also do some self-study. And not to forget, there will be loads of exam tips so that you are more confident when giving AZ-900. Please do not miss to watch previous parts of this series. 105 latest and important questions are already covered. A must watch. All the links shared in the description box. So let's jump in and prepare for AZ-900 exam. So let's begin part 7 with question number 106 and this one says that GeoZone redundant storage or GZRS includes both general purpose version 1 and general purpose version 2 storage accounts. Is it a true or a false statement? And this one my friends is a false statement. And we can validate our answer on this Microsoft documentation that says GeoZone redundant storage. And in this documentation, you can come across to this section that clearly says that only standard general purpose version 2 storage accounts supports GZRS. Now let's move to another related question. Question number 107 says that GeoZone redundant storage or GZRS is supported by which of the following Azure storage services? Your options are Azure Blob Storage, Azure Files, Azure Table Storage and the last one is Azure Queue Storage. And the correct answer to this question is option A, option B, option C and option D. So basically all of these Azure storage services are supported by GZRS. And this question can also be validated on the same Microsoft documentation. It says that GZRS is supported by all of the Azure storage services including Azure Blob Storage, Azure Files, Azure Table Storage and Azure Queue Storage. So that's why we have chosen all of them as an answer to this question. And now let's move on to the question number 108. It says which property of your storage account should you check to determine which write operation have been replicated to secondary region. Your options are last modified time property or last sync time property and the last one is last update time property. And the correct answer to this question is option B last sync time property. Moving on with the question number 109, this one is a yes no kind of question. You are given with some of the statements and for each statement you have to tell whether it's yes or no. So let's read the first statement. It says data that is stored in Azure storage account automatically has at least three copies. Is it yes or no? And this one my friends is a correct statement. Just to tell you a little bit more, there are different replication options available with a storage account. The minimum replication option is locally redundant storage or LRS. And with LRS, data is replicated synchronously three times within a primary region. And friends, you can validate this answer on this Microsoft documentation. Here you can see that we are given with this table which says LRS, ZRS, GRS and GZRS. So all of them are redundancy option in Microsoft storage account. And then you are given with various parameters for the comparison between all of these options. You have to come and last option says number of copies of data maintained on separate nodes. And here you can see that under LRS we are given very clearly that three copies within a single region are maintained. So that's why this is a correct statement. Moving on to the next statement, it says all the data that is copied to an Azure storage account is backed up automatically to another Azure data center, whether it's yes or no. And this one, my friend, according to me, is a no statement or incorrect statement. And this is because data is not backed up automatically to another Azure data center, although it can be depending upon the replication options configured for the account locally redundant storage or LRS is the default which maintains three copies of the data in the data center. So in my opinion, it is only locally redundant storage option in which the data is automatically backed up in Azure data center. But that option is not explicitly called out in this statement. That's why I have chosen no as a correct answer to this question. Now let's move on to the third statement. It says an Azure storage account can contain up to 2 terabyte of data 
and up to 1 million files. And once again, I have picked a no for this statement as well. And it's very important to note that the statement is saying up to 2 terabyte of data. So in one sense, it's saying 2 terabyte is the maximum limit. However, the limits are much higher. At the time of recording this video, the current storage limit is 2 petabyte. But I highly recommend that you should verify these figures on the Microsoft documentation. However, for this question, we are just given with 2 terabyte. So that's why if in the question you are only asked for 2 terabyte of data, then you can always be sure that this is an incorrect statement. And now let's move on to the question number 110. It says which Azure storage access tier has the highest storage cost but the lowest access cost? And your options are hot tier, cool tier or archive tier. The correct answer for this question is hot tier. And of course, you can verify the answer on this Microsoft documentation that says hot tier. And in this one, it says an online tier optimized for storing data that is accessed or modified frequently. The hot tier has highest storage cost, but the lowest access cost. And that's exactly what our question is also asking. So that's why our answer is hot tier. Moving on to the next question, question number 111, it says the archive tier is not supported as default access tier for storage account. True or false? And this one, my friend, is a true statement. Now let's move on to the question number 112. It says, what is the minimum recommended data retention period for cool access tiers? Is it 5 days, 30 days, 45 days or 90 days? The correct answer for this question is 30 days. Now let's take a related question, question number 113 and that one says that what is the minimum recommended data retention period for the archive access tiers. Please note the difference between both the questions. In the earlier question, we were talking about cool access tiers while in this question, we are talking about archive access tiers and the options for these questions are 30 days, 60 days, 90 days and 180 days and the correct answer for this question is 180 days. And both these questions, question number 112 and 113 can be verified on this Microsoft documentation which is titled as hot, cool and archive access tiers for blob data. Here in this documentation, in this section, you can read about cool tier, an online tier optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed or modified. Data in the cool tier should be stored for a minimum of 30 days. And that's exactly what we chose as an answer to the question number 112. Moving on to the archive tier, we have an offline tier optimized for storing data that is rarely accessed and that has a flexible latency requirements on the order of hours. Data in the archive tier should be stored for a minimum of 180 days. And this is our answer for the question number 113. Let's move on. Question number 114 says that if you have Azure resources deployed to every region, you can implement availability zone in all the regions. So whether it's a true statement or a false statement. And this one, my friends, is a false statement. So please understand the question very carefully. The question says that if you deploy Azure resources in every region, can you implement availability zone in all the regions? So basically question is asking you whether all the Azure regions have availability zones. But this one is not true. Not all the regions have availability zones. Now let's move on to the question number 115. It says that you have an Azure subscription named subscription one. You sign into the Azure portal and create a resource group named RG1. And from the Azure documentation, you have the following command that creates virtual machine named VM1. And here you can see in this blue text, we are given with the Azure command. Moving on, the question says that you need to create VM1 in subscription one by using the command. The solution given is from a computer that runs Windows 10, install Azure CLI from a command prompt, sign into the Azure portal and then run the command. Does this meet the goal? I hope you understood the ask of the question. The question is giving you a scenario where you have a Windows 10 computer and you have installed Azure CLI and then you want to log into the Azure portal using command prompt and run this command. So whether you will be able to run this command using this configuration of computer and the other resources. And the correct answer for this question is that this is not a valid solution. And this is because my friends, this command can be run from PowerShell or the command prompt if you have Azure CLI installed. Now, please pay a close attention, my friends, that in question, it says sign into Azure. 
but be very careful with the wordings of the question here they are saying sign into azure but that doesn't mean that you are signing to azure portal itself so basically when the question is saying that sign into azure that means that you are connecting to your azure account using command prompt but that definitely does not mean that you are actually on the azure portal so what will happen in this command that when you will run this command this command will generate an error vm admin user error and this is because you have not mentioned username or password in this command so if you want to successfully run this command you have to add username and password in this command as a parameter but for now both of those parameters are missing and that's why this is an incorrect command and friends i have two more variations of the same question let's check it out and things will be more clearer to you so here we have one more variation question number 116 the question is exactly the same the command is same but this time the solution says that from a computer that runs on windows 10 install azure cli this time the solution says that from powershell sign into azure and then run the command does this meet the goal and this time also friends this is incorrect solution and why so firstly because of the reasons that i just explained in the previous question and secondly this command is a bash command and not a powershell command so what exactly is the correct solution let's move on to the question number 117 and here comes the question number 117 once again question is exactly the same the command is same but this time solution says from azure portal mind it my friends this time we are not on windows 10 machine but we are directly on azure portal further the solution says launch azure cloud shell and select bash run the command in cloud shell does this meet the goal so where exactly are we running the command we are running the command in cloud shell where is cloud shell the cloud shell is in azure portal and that's why this time my friends this is a correct solution i hope you understood the logic based on which i selected the answers in case you have some doubts or some confusions please let me know in the comment section now let's move on to the question number 118 it says building a data center infrastructure is an example of operational expenditure or opex cost is it a true or a false statement and this one my friends is a false statement because building a data center infrastructure is a capital expenditure and not operational expenditure now let's move on to the question number 119 it says monthly salaries of technical personnel are an example of operational cost is it true or false and this one my friends is a true statement because monthly salaries are not your asset they are kind of liability if you check the books of accounts and moreover monthly salaries are recurring costs and that's why they are categorized as operational expenditure now let's move on to the question number 120 it says leasing software is an example of operational expenditure cost true or false and this one is a false statement and this is because operational expenditure as i just mentioned is an ongoing cost such as leasing software but friends please pay attention in case microsoft changes the wording of the question and instead of leasing they say purchase of software in that case it is a one time cost and it is categorized as asset so that's why when you purchase a software then it's a capital expenditure but in case you are leasing the software then it's a operational expenditure and now comes the question number 121 it says north america is represented by a single azure region true or false and this one my friends is a false statement the reason is that north america has several azure regions including west us central us south central us east us and canada east moving on with the question number 122 it says every azure region has multiple data centers and this one of course is a true statement so please understand a very important azure concept A region is a set of data centers deployed within a latency defined parameter and connected through a dedicated regional low latency network. Now let's move on to the question number 123. It says data transfers between Azure services located in different Azure regions are always free. True or false? And this one my friends is a false statement. Well honestly I wish it was true so we all could have saved lot of dollars but unfortunately this one is a false statement. So please remember outbound data transfer is charged at a normal rate and inbound data transfer is free. Moving on with the next question, question number 124 says that data that is copied to an Azure storage account is maintained automatically in at least 3 copies. True or false? 
and this one my friends is a true statement and we have discussed this concept many times in part 6 also we discussed and in part 7 in the previous questions we also discussed this concept so whenever you are creating some data in azure storage account the minimum replication option that you can opt for is locally redundant storage lrs and in this minimum option also the data is replicated synchronously three times within a primary region so that's why this is a true statement now let's move on to the question number 125 it says availability zones are used to replicate data and applications to multiple regions true or false and this one my friends is a false statement and the reason is that availability zones protect your applications and data from data center failures so please understand that availability zones are unique physical location within an azure region so basically they are within an azure region and they do not span across multiple azure region and because the requirement of the question was across multiple azure regions that's why this is a false statement so that was all for today i'm sure that you learned some new concepts and are feeling more confident for the az 900 exam please do consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel and not to miss pressing that bell icon and selecting all so that you get all the timely notifications and please please share our videos to all your loved ones who are also learning and preparing for microsoft exams i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.